Greetings, viewer and or viewers. Today I have a very special unboxing because I have not one but two new core games. A, well, which is, I will go through them now. The core games are Munchkin Spell School. I talked about that on an episode ago. Uh, Mook's Monster Mashup, which came out under the radar for me because it didn't have a Munchkin name on it. And that's usually what I search by, so that kind of slipped by me, so I got that. Uh, one expand, full expansion, Munchkin Pathfinder 2, Guns and Razzes. And then a whole bunch of extra swag. Thank you, Steve Jackson Games. It is Christmas in July. I received... I, this is nothing... None of the rest of this is what was on my order. I got the green Munchkin, Munchkin Jumbo D6s in green. Uh, I already have the Jumbo D6s in all the colors, but uh, this is awesome, and I'll probably give it to Corey if he wins, or as a present of some sort. Shh, don't tell him. I don't think he watches these unboxings, so it's still going to be a surprise. I got a Munchkin Journal, a uh, Munchkin Apocalypse 2 Cheap Impact Journal. It's blank, uh, but it's a very cool thing, and I like that a lot. Uh, I got a metal pin, lapel pin, with its own rule. Again, I did not order this, it just came as random free swag. A huge bag of uh, new uh, pawns. Flower pawns, spike pawns, zombie pawns, in a whole bunch of new colors. The uh, snot green, uh, hot pink, bright orange, black, glow in the dark, and clear. I think that's all. But yeah, the that is a significant amount of money. Dean, what are you doing? Hey, buddy. And Dean is going to play with the camera now. Or he just found the box. But I also got three bookmarks, two of them new, one of them the uh, uh, social media bookmark, which is interesting. The Spell School co co Cooperative Collaboration, which was uh, advertised as being in any order, I believe this month, definitely this week, but uh, possibly this month. So that's kind of why I made the order in the first place, and I was behind by a few things. And the Munchkin Pathfinder bookmark of Knocking on the Dungeon's Door. And then a bunch of promos, some of which I did not have. Sidekick Awesome Bear, which is a Super Munchkin, which we'll get to play today because it's Super Munchkin Day. If you're watching these out of order, this is before uh, Season 2, Episode 6. Uh, a Wishing Ring with the new art on there. Uh, a monster named Richard. Chaotic Cranky, plus 3 against Elves. They annoy him. Immune to Fire or Flame. The Game Mechanic, we already had those. I went through that on the last unboxing. Trap Panic. This is phenomenal. Show your hand. You must run away from each monster suffering its bad stuff if you fail. You cannot let your sidekick take the hit for you this time. Discard those monsters after you resolve this trap. So it's not just discard the monsters out of your hand. Run away from them and they take their bad stuff. Holy crap. Uh, Professor Tesla's electrical protective device had one of those. Mistakingly modified Moop. That will definitely go in this one as well. Uh, plus we use this The Unholy Cow. Creature of Evil. Minus four against Hell Knights, plus three against Eagle Knights. And the Grass Sword. This is interesting too, it's an Adventure Time promo. And it says, to equip this, you must discard another hand item. Once equipped, it can never be discarded, lost, stolen, sold, traded, or unequipped. Holy crap. I don't know what the etymology is of that, the, the, the history of a grass sword, but wow, that is crazy stuff. So, I am going to unwrap all of these cards here, go through, and I'll come back and show you the decks and uh, show you some of my favorite cards. So I'll see you in a second. Okay, I'm back. For you, it's been like one second. For me, it's been like 20 minutes because we've been going through all these cards. These are freaking awesome. First of all, the art is amazing. Uh, none of this is John Kovalik this time, 
Sorry, John. Actually, no. Uh, no, it isn't. So this one is Katie Cook for Spell School. Uh, where is it? Pathfinder is Shane White, and uh, Moop is who drew Moop? I think it's Ian McGinty. Yes, Ian McGinty. So none of the games today were drawn by John Kovalik, whom I love. I will still tag him in this video. And uh, hopefully he'll retweet me again, because I know that he he loves the other artists too. It takes a little bit off his plate for Munchkin purposes. So, but uh, it was it it's people that have done Munchkin before, like the uh, Katie Cook did the Love Shark Baby uh, bo booster, and uh, Shane White did uh, obviously Pathfinder, and Ian McGinty also did Munchkin Fu, which we played a couple weeks ago. So, but the art is phenomenal. If nothing else, get the sets for that. But the cards are great, too. Um, first of all, Moop came with the Munchkin comic uh, teaser, basically. But it had a, a card in it. Another promo card, the brown nose, uh, will stay with you for one fight. After the combat, he moves to the highest level player, replacing, replacing any hirelings that player already has. So it's not a bad hireling, but there's certainly better ones out there, and that would be kind of asshole-ish for Cory to have a really great uh, 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 sidekick that's been helping him out, and he's like higher level than me now, and then he gets this nose that just outs his kid with the same powers as you, which has the like the same uh, his bonus is equal to your level, which would be hilarious. But uh, here's some of my favorites from the vi various ones. This is from uh, Guns N' Roses, uh, Gobthulu. There's a lot of Cthulhu cards out there now. And he counts as a goblin, which is hilarious. Uh, Plum Pudding, which is a Santa monster. I'd include that one. So tasty and deadly. Uh, plus three against any munchkin who has food on the game table. So this would be great to throw at Cory. Uh... We don't need no stinking badgers! <laughs> I love this card! I, as a huge fan of UHF and Blazing Saddles, the stinking badgers is amazing. Uh, and then, uh, Gobsolete. Uh, played during combat, the monster now counts as a goblin for all purposes. <laughs> so, that'd be great to throw in, like, like, oh, you're facing the great Cthulhu, he's Gobsolete. Which makes him a goblin, so all you can throw in his goblins, and then Gobthulu shows up with him. That'd be funny as hell. Uh, the new class is the Gunslinger. If you want to pause and look at that, that's amazing. And uh, Gunslinging, each gun you have, which is a new, uh, new-ish card type in the Treasures, is guns, which there have been some before. There's one in the Skull Kickers booster called The Gun. There's also several others uh, in the... Judge Dread Booster, uh, Munchkin Impossible has guns, Good Bad and the Munchkin has guns, uh, uh, Star Munchkin has lasers, but I don't think those count as guns. Um, anything that, it describes it in the rules, anything that fires a projectile chemically, it counts as a gun. That's, it actually says that. So, like, um, I'm going to say, like, the plasma cannon probably counts as a gun. Um, there's a few others. If it has the word gun in it, or it obviously fires a projectile, then it counts as a gun. And then the second one is the cool one. Uh, when you're fighting alone, you may discard two cards to gain a combat bonus equal to your level. Uh, I already looked on the site. This has been uh, eroded already to once per combat. They thought that was uh, implied, but they should know better by now. Uh, and the new faction, Rasmirian Vision, which I didn't even know was coming because it didn't even say that on the box. Uh, reward the faithful. Drive face down treasure whenever another player sells items to go up a level. That's freaking awesome because Corey sells things a lot. <laughs> so that's the doors on Guns N' Roses. Uh, my favorite treasures. Bet on the other team. This is a go up a level card. Maybe. Play this after you have played a card to help the monsters in a combat that you are not in. Uh, if the monster side wins, you get a level. If the munchkin side wins, add this card to their treasure. So, uh, 
Also, the air conditioning's not working in my house, so I might you might see me dab my forehead with this towel here. Uh, uh, the Eyes of Doom. When you kick open the door, the, the art is really cool on there too. Uh, when you kick open the door and get hit by a curse, you may discard one card from your hand to make the curse also affect one player of your choice. So you still get hit by the curse, but you can be an asshole about it. Which could be very interesting for like uh, universal curses, like income tax, where I have to discard something and then everybody has to discard something, and then I make Tank do it too. <laughs> Uh, Perfection's Key. If you do not like the card you get when you kick open the door, you may discard one card from your hand and try once more. You are stuck with the second card. Uh, Carcadian Horn. Okay, you pronounce that. Put the pronunciation in the comments. Play during any combat to reverse the effect of a one-shot that has just been played on you. If it was played to help the monsters, and it helps the munchkins, and vice versa. Uh, usable once only. Uh, I'm going to say if you get something like the flea powder that makes you run away, it makes the monsters run away. And you don't get the treasure or anything, but they run away. Uh, the Gloves of Larceny. Once per turn, you may discard a, a card to try to steal a small item owned by another player. Basically, the theft rule. Uh, on a 4 you, or higher, you succeed. On a 3 or less, you lose a level. You cannot try to steal if you're already level 1. That should have been on the Thief card from day 1. Uh, cap of Human Guise. Ignore any penalties monsters get against your class, faction, or gender. All they see is a nice, non-threatening, ordinary human. But if a monster has a bonus against humans, that bonus is doubled against you. It's a double-edged hat. <laughs> That's my, my favorite treasures from there. Uh, moving on to Spell School, which the, the art is very, like, kitty, kid-like. It's awesome. Uh, the level 8 Big Brain. Your headgear counts for her in this fight, not for you, and so does everyone else's. She gets a bonus from every hat in the combat, or in the on the table. <laughs> That's awesome. This, I just love the, uh, I love the pun. I've loved it for a long time. The Rap Scallions. It's a hip-hop onion. <laughs> Love it. The Barf Gollum. Uh, gross. Plus four against anyone who has food or drink on the table when this monster comes out. Anti-Cory card. <laughs> uh, and then we get to the classes, which are all, like, school clubs in this game. Uh, the Sports Club. When you accept another player as your helper, each of you draws a face-down door immediately. Not after combat, immediately. And a uh, bonus clause, you only need 900 gold pieces to buy a level. The Potion Club, when you play one shot uh, with a combat bonus, it has an extra plus one, which adds to the ridiculousness with the, uh, the litmus test of the cow pie to make it worth, like, plus 63 or whatever. And then Boiling Over, when you play a one-shot, roll the die. On a six, you get it back and may save it for later or use it again immediately. If you use it again immediately, you cannot try to retrieve it a second time. The Forbidden Magic Club. Club. Bleh. Recursive. When you kick open the door and find a curse, you may put it into your hand after dealing with its effects. So if it makes you lose your hand, you'll at least have one card in your hand. Not so fast. You may discard your whole hand, minimum three cards, to force another player to re-roll a successful runaway. This one I really like. Oh, I like this one a lot. The Chess Club. Check. You may look at the top door in the, d in the deck before deciding whether to loot the room or look for trouble. That's fun, but that's not the good one. And Mate. Once per combat, you may lose one level to add a mate to any monster. The mate is identical to the base monster, including any enhancers played on it, and gives the same rewards if defeated. Holy fook. And, uh, let's see. The curse... Your, uh, final exam. Your level does not count in your next combat. Har, har, har. And, uh, the monster enhancer, who shall not be named. Play during any combat if the monster is defeated, draw two extra treasures, plus ten. 
Anyone who says the name of this monster after the card is played loses a level. This effect lasts until the end of the current turn. Not the combat, the turn. Those are some mean ones there. And then the treasures. I only got a couple of them. Uh, maybe a couple more here. <laughs> okay. Uh, the manual of transmission. There's the damn. <laughs> uh, you may shift a card from your hand to each of your opponents. Each card you give away is worth an extra plus two in combat. That is not a one shot. It's a plus three item that you can use in any combat. Great Hall. If you drew this card face up, played immediately, blah blah blah. Uh, any turn, exact turn in combat, draw three face up treasures. That's basically the Horde card, but it has a good name. The Wand Bond. Play this to attach a wand to any other item. The wand no longer has a hand requirement and goes with the item if it was lost, stolen, or discarded. As an item enhancer. That's cool, because there's a bunch of wands in here. Uh, and the Ring of Reacquisition. Play at any time to go through the discards and take one card of your choice. Wand of Dowsing, basically, but I like the, the art on the card, too. <laughs> so, not, not very many in that uh, stack. A lot of it's... Uh, not because it's bad, just because it's stuff they've had before. And it just has new art, new names. But I'm not going to get into that stuff like that. And then for Moop, I don't have a lot of door cards to go through with the Moop. Because most of it is all uh, puns and great monster names. I did pick out a couple of my favorites. But it'll be much more fun in the context of the game which won't be coming until, like, November, chronologically, and we're not going to tell Corey about it so that he has his patented foot face when uh, when it comes out, because this is one that flew under the radar and I didn't get it for a while, so we're just not going to tell Corey about it at all. But the, the level 20 is the Hippopede. I always like to pull out the level 20 monster. And uh, the level 20 in uh, Spell School is Moldy Mart. I thought that was pretty easy, but... <laughs> Uh, the the Hippopede, though, uh, kind of has the opposite of some other monsters. If you successfully run away, go up a level. So, nice and friendly. Uh, Amoeba Earhart. Uh, fire Flame Attacks count double. Plus four gets anyone who has more than one race or more than one class. The Boomerangatang. I love the, the art on this one. The is so hilarious. The Boo Boo Zebra. Your headgear counts double against the Vuvu Zebra, but you, if you have no headgear at all, the noise gives it an extra plus three. <laughs> the tree sturgeon? How did that fish get in that tree? I want to know its story. The largemouth basilisk? <laughs> So, so that's all I'm pulling out for the, the doors on move because it'll be much more fun when we're actually encountering these monsters. I'll say them out loud, obviously. I always do. But uh, one of my favorite things to say, kill it with fire uh, in the treasures here. Dabbing. Starting to drip down my face. Uh, you may play this only after you defeat a monster with fire. This can give you the winning level. It's a go-up level card, obviously. Um, new and improved. I love new jokes. Some people don't like news and say that no news is good news. <laughs> I, I'm just glad I didn't like cross it with, with a fox. It'd be Fox News. And uh, let's see, we got the beaver cleaver. Ask your parents, kids. Possibly your grandparents. Hi, Dean. Could you get down? Get down. Get down, get down, get down. Thank you. One of my favorite jokes in the whole thing, the Kentucky Derby. It's a horse hat. <laughs> it gives you a plus one right away. But it has, it has the dirt face on it, like... The Kentucky Derby. Uh, miraculous Moop. The Munchkins must be losing by at least ten points at the moment you play the Miraculous Moop. The Munchkins automatically win the fight. 
This cannot give a munchkin a winning level. Wow. Did you just, did, did your brother dare you to run across the table that time? And then, uh, the last two are item enhancers, and these are freaking awesome. Great Big. Place this card with a hand, hand item of your choice. It is now the Great Big Whatever. Its bonus is doubled or increased to six, whichever is greater. So you can have a great big rat on a stick. Wow, it doesn't say one that already gives a level bonus. So you're going to have one of those no bonus hand items and increase it to six. Uh, and is worth a thousand gold pieces and is now a big item requiring two hands. Goes with his lost, stolen, or discarded. And the, but you can add that with the hands free item enhancer. Place this card with a hands item of your choice. It is now the hands free whatever, and its hand requirement is zero. If this card is played along with Great Big, the item remains zero hands. It goes with the item of lost, stolen, or discarded. Right. Hands free, Great Big, red on a stick. <laughs> Great big hands-free Civil War cannon. Yeah, big, big. Uh, so, and we got a bunch of other ones here. Again, with the the puns and stuff in the uh, in the treasures here, that'll be more fun when we're actually playing. I just wanted to go through a few of them, show you all of this great stuff. And uh, again, you're not going to see Spell School or uh, Move for a while, um, like October, November. But they're there. And you'll see Munchkin Pathfinder. We'll add Pathfinder 2 in... Uh, September 6th. So mark your calendars. Uh, they also came with their own dice. Little shiny purple one for Spell School. And the uh, purple and blue for Moop. And those will be added to the bag, obviously. And, uh... But... That's all the stuff I got today. That was quite a haul. Again, thank you, Steve Jackson Games. You continue to treat your customers with a plum and like the, the like royalty. You just treat them the way that every company should treat their customers, and that is phenomenal. Keep it up, and I will stay a loyal customer and Men in Black forever. So, uh, be sure to like, share, favorite, subscribe, pay it forward, send us money, be excellent to each other. We'll see you next time.